Oh, do we have a great one today, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, guys? It's Apollo here, obviously, and we are back with NTW3, the mod for Napoleon Total War. And what this mod does is that it makes Napoleon that more grand, more epic, more factions, more units... Uh, more game modes, more historical battles, the battlefields are bigger. It's just, you know, it's just way more historical. So sit back, relax, and get some snacks and drinks and enjoy the epic battle. And today, we certainly do have an epic battle because we have a 3 verse 2. Alright, so a 3 verse 2, but the way that they're, they're setting this up, this is going to be really interesting. So when you play NTW3... The faction you select has a score next to it, like a ranking system. So, for example, the United Kingdom Peninsula, uh, they are, I believe, ranked 10. And there's two armies of them. So, there's two players who brought the United Kingdom Pen the Peninsula. And so, that's a, that's a total of 20 because they're both scored at 10, obviously. They're the same faction. So, 10, 10, that's 20. Now, the other players they're taking on, like I said, there's three armies versus two, but if you add up all three of their armies, it equals 21. So, that's, again, that score is based on strength. So, yes, the British side is outnumbered, but in terms of strength, or, you know, or skill or whatever, uh, or not skill, I'm not saying player skill, but like faction power, they are even. So it's going to be really intriguing to see how the UK the, or Great Britain or uh, United Kingdom takes on, uh, you know, more numbers, but with more powerful troops. So it's going to be a quality versus quantity, essentially. So on the other side, I think we saw uh, for a second, we saw one of the other factions. We do have Italy here. So it's always I love Italy. Italy's an awesome faction. Uh, I, I for a second we saw the uh, the cab of the other side. Uh, so we'll go ahead and press play. Uh, so like I said in the beginning, there's two Peninsular uh, United Kingdom armies. Uh, they're bringing cav. Uh, obviously, <laughs> obviously they're bringing cav, but they're using the cav. Here we go. Here we go. So we have um, Poland. They're a very strong cav faction. And then over here we have, oh boy, who is this? Uh, I don't know what faction this is. Okay, so I looked it up really quick. Uh, it is a, basically it's Poland. It's a legion uh, that fought in the uh, Napoleon's army. So it's the Legion of Vistula. So uh, I'll probably just refer to them as Poland. It's kind of insane that they have that as a faction. This is what I'm talking about, NTW3, where they have these really cool, like, minor factions. And when I say minor, I mean extremely minor. Like, the Legion of Vistula. Like, come on. Like, come on. That's so cool. That's so awesome. Anyways, it looks like, just a little bird's eye view, kind of the British are kind of herding uh, the enemy cav. They're kind of surrounding them a little bit. I don't know if this is some kind of trap, or maybe they're kind of falling back to the tree line because there's some, some units waiting for them. But yeah, they are definitely moving up and trying to, you know, this is classic NTW3. It always starts off like this. You're sending out your cav. You're scouting up ahead. You're looking for what the enemy has. You're looking for weak spots. You're looking for, uh, it, you know, ways you can exploit their army or, or whatever. Um, but so far, no major engagement. And, I, you know, I would be very careful. Yeah, I, okay, exactly. This is good. I'm glad he's falling back. Now, I was going to say, I would be very, very careful with, um, you know, engaging in Cav here because, keep in mind, you're taking on two Polish armies. You have Poland and then the Legion over there. So, Poland's known for their Cav, you know, the winged hussars. I mean, they're not quite obviously of this, this uh, you know, time period or whatever, but uh, they are known for their Cav. Um, so, they got to be careful, and this is good. They fell back and... Um, we've got some, it looks like some British reinforcements, some infantry. Oh, did they just drop? Get the full standard up, man. There you go. We got, um, the 50, the 52nd and the 51st moving up. It looked, look, yeah, 52nd, 51st. That's cool. Now the cab has fallen back even more. Yeah, they definitely don't want to engage here. I think the, uh, British are kind of relying on their... Their infantry to win the day for this battle. I think if he loses his cav too early here, it will be disaster. So he's got the King German Legion 1st Hussars. Over here he's got the 18th King's Irish. 
uh, hussars. Very cool. And then over here, um, we got the first Royal Dragoons. And we've got the fourth Royal Irish. So, cool. Got some Irish in here. Uh, but yeah, my uh, ancestry goes back to Ireland and Scotland. Those are two two regions, but I'm also um, I'm also Northern Italian and uh, like Dutch German that kind of. Anyways, why am I talking about this? I don't know. I just I felt like telling you. So now he's pushing up his uh, cav again. Now that he has the infantry support, I think he feels a little bit more com uh, confident, more comfortable, uh, ready to move up and potentially start an engagement with his um, his light foot here. Now we do have, uh, no, okay, well, we do have these, what is this, militia? Very cool, uh, and he's got some infantry, I'm sure there's more to follow from there, but this definitely looks like it's going to be a fight for the hill. Both sides want to take this hill, so the British are desperately setting up both of their, and this is both armies, by the way, guys, both players are merging right here, so this is where this battle is going to go down. We do have three, look at this. Three units of units in the back here. Three units of units. <laughs> Three units of infantry in the back. Uh, and they're probably going to be mobil mobilized a little bit later, I assume. I Or maybe he forgot about them, which is a possibility. Now, they are shooting in column formation, which is hilarious. Yeah, you might as well put them in line. I, they killed one guy. No, three. Oh, God. They're getting dragged. They're like, no. I didn't sign up for this. Oh, this is cool. I love this animation. I wonder how long it goes. Look, it looks like he's he's still alive. Like, he's struggling. That is such a cool animation. Can so... Dude, you're not going to help the guy? You're just going to watch him be dragged? Oh, my God. It's horrible. It's like a rite of passage into the Polish army to be dragged by your... By your cat... By your horse. All right. So, more infantry fanning out. Now, this... Now, keep in mind, this location... Wait, hold on. What is this? Oh, we got a sneak attack. Look at this. We have a sneak attack from Poland who rushes into... Oh, my God. Is this British artillery? He took out the British artillery with that very sneaky cab charge. The cab is behind enemy lines, but I think... It's not a suicide mission. He should be able to save these guys. That is a huge loss. A huge loss to the British because one they're already outnumbered you know taking on three players I assume they're gonna be outnumbered with artillery so the fact that he lost artillery before even fighting uh, you know before the artillery could be used is tragic um, and we'll see if the British can you know can recover from that uh, we do have some militia opening fire on the British forces down there uh, not sure what Italy's trying to do here. I guess he's just trying to fight for this uh, this patch of territory. Now the British are moving up. They're getting aggressive. They need to. They have to. After losing that artillery, they need to try to grab something here to aid them in this fight. So they're going to push up and try to take the very top of this hill. But look at this. As soon as they take this hill, we've got artillery. We've got infantry. We've got... <laughs> That's cool. They've got the French flag. That's awesome. That's so cool. I mean, obviously, they're part of the French army, so they would have the French flag. And there we go. More and more of these forces are lining up. Now, it does look pretty intimidating, but remember, uh, the United Kingdom is a stronger faction. What is this? Another ambush? Another ambush. We have Italian Cav coming out of nowhere and crushing... The British, who I assume were chasing someone down, but that's another huge loss. Guys, uh, this is not looking good for the uh, United Kingdom, the peninsular uh, side of things, because the peninsular side of things, you get what I'm saying, their side is not looking good because one, they've lost artillery, two, they lost a cav unit. Those are two vital units in this game. Cav is so nasty. It is so eff like effective. In this game. Now, thankfully, the cab unit did return. Look at some units are returning, right? Are they? Yeah. They're like, oh, okay. All right. It's not that bad. We're good. We're good. Uh, we got artillery over here setting up. They got to be careful. 
Poland is like swimming around like sharks. And they are uh, getting anyone who's not with the herd. Or with the uh, school of fish, I guess you could say. Here's a big push over here. Look at this. Fourth Royal Irish colliding with the Ulans. We've got uh, some units forming square to kind of support them. Looks like they were going to go for another cab charge, but they decide to fall back. They do break the po the Polish cab, but how far will the British go in pursuing them? Yeah, what a great mod. And there we go. The line battles are underway. The King's German Legion opening fire. Now, I think the whole point of that cab charge was to kind of throw off the Polish player a little bit and to buy time for the British to set up their firing lines. Great cap, look at this. Just going straight in, letting not, holding nothing back. He's got another cav unit going in. Look, charging in his cav against overwhelming numbers of line infantry. Oh my God, what a fight. And this is buying his line infantry time to set up on top of the hill and get a really good firing position. Our men are running. Oh, but it's too much. It's too much. This cab should return, though. And look, here's the other charge. Oh, they took out the artillery. Okay. Okay, we got ourselves a battle here. The British definitely didn't start off strong, but they are making they're making moves. And here comes uh, the Legion. Uh, the Polish Legion going in. Trying to reinforce the infantry here. And while that mess of a fight is going on, Look at this line battle. Look at the fight for the hill. This is exactly what the British needed. And now they're setting up their lines. They're Our looking good. They've got a uh, force kind of looking into the tree line. I think they are afraid of enemies pushing through here. And that's that's one thing I, I, f I wanted to mention, but I forgot. Uh, I think I got dis distracted by something else. But these this tree line specifically is going to be a big danger for the British and it's really wise that he has a unit in reserve kind of watching it just in case they kind of you know use the tree to cover their their movement and like you know give them concealment and then push out and attack the flank so really good he even has some units watching the flank here the 52nd here's the 51st 52nd 51st are always together I guess the fight is intense. Look at those French flags. It is so cool that you can play as the, the Legion. Oh, good volley as the British were turning away. They are giving up some ground. Uh, I think they're going to try to, you know, use the very top of the hill. But again, they're taking losses the as they fall the back. Must rest a while. They've got units that are exhausted. His, his cav is exhausted. You might want to rest the cav a little bit and, and let them, you know, not be exhausted. Use them at another time. And here we go. The British are not only just watching the tree line. They're engaging the tree line. They're pushing up. They got the first foot guard. We got um, the second cold stream foot guard. The old eyes. So cool. You know, I got to give some Brit you know, the British some love here. I know a lot of you guys know me as the, you know, the, the Napoleon, uh, Napoleon weeaboo or something. <laughs> and which is true, but you know, I, I of course, uh, the British have a cool history, and you got to uh, respect the British. It's just, you know, those Anglos, it, it gets to their head and, you know, you got to keep them in check. <laughs> Only kidding. All right. So, yeah, they've got this nice position. They set up, thankfully, uh, an artillery piece, which is going to be uh, probably taking on the uh, Polish artillery over here. Um, so it's going to be a pretty intense fight. That's a very close range in terms of artillery. Um, oh, my goodness. That was a good hit there. This is literally a mat. Oh, imagine being an artillery crewman and it's just like you're literally it's kind of like a line battle, but with artillery and you're just trying to quickly reload this thing and clean it and sponge it and everything and get it ready to go. And it's a battle of who can shoot faster and more accurately. 
But I would I will say that the British do seem to have a bit of an advantage because they have the high ground. But they only have two pieces. Let's go back to the other side where the uh, the force battle is underway. This is really cool. You got hill battles, force battles, cab battles. This is why I love NTW3. And by the way, guys, if you have some really good replays of NTW3, send them my way. I'm always looking for these things, and I can never find them. Uh, so, yeah, send them my way either through Discord or through my email, pixelatedapollo at gmail.com. Uh, there I will see the uh, NTW3 uh, replays. Again, always looking for them. So, we got this beautiful line here. Now, I'm kind of surprised... That we're not seeing some of the troops. Now, I know why they're kind of in thicker columns. It does help with morale, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I'm, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see them kind of overextend the British lines. You know, spread them out a little bit more. Just to really put pressure on the British flank and use the numbers against them. But this is a problem over here. Honestly, I would, if I was the Polish side, I would be sending over a lot of reinforcements to deal with this forest battle. I would always try to gain control of the forest. Because I think if you take the forest, you can use it as a launching point to flank the hill. So, hopefully, yeah, and he is shifting over more troops over there. He's shifting over some line infantry. So I'm curious how they're going to approach this. Uh, look at this fight right here. Look at this. It's so cool. It's like seeing a real life battle. It's just the way they're formed up. And see that like that's what I want to see in Total War games. You know, I want to see life. I want to see history come to life. And obviously these aren't, you know, big armies compared to the time, but it captures it well. You know, obviously the there's some the Arcadianess to it, of course. Uh, but ju there has to be, or these battles would be like eight hours long or longer. Um, but yeah, it's just cool seeing like rows of troops kind of march as the others hold. It's just awesome. It just looks awesome. There we go. We got some skirmishers who are like suicide charging in, taking a huge blast from the infantry up here. And God, does that not look good. That looks sexy. A lot of King's German legions. They do have some Germans in the army. And yeah, look at this. They are really stretched out here. Glorious victories, huh? Is soon to be on. Yeah, don't listen to that. That's not true. <laughs> He's just saying that to keep the morale high. Look at this sneaky cav, cav unit. So we got the uh, Royal Dragoons, the bird catchers, looking for some birdies. Uh, no, they are, they're, they're, I guess, either scouting the forest or potentially setting up an ambush charge. Because there are some lights in here he could charge and definitely destroy. So he's probably just going to wait. But more of Polish forces are shifting into the forest. And they're just kind of waiting. They're kind of chilling here. Nobody really wants to engage. Now, I understand... Why the British don't want to necessarily engage. We'll fast forward a little bit too as we just kind of watch them uh, sit here and shoot each other with the artillery. I understand why the British don't want to engage because, well, they are outnumbered. Uh, and they definitely need to use this high ground to their advantage. Uh, over on this side, we do have a unit of 76 foot. Uh, they are ch kind of chasing down some, some cav, some Italian cav. Um, so they're, they're kind of going around and I, I assume looking for an opportunity to kind of hit the British in the rear, but, uh, yeah, still, oh, wait, 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 hold on. We got a cab charge. We do have a cab charge. Now they are pushing up here. These units are breaking. Let's see. Oh, he's going for the artillery. This is a suicide mission. And it looks like he's going to get it. No, they break. But they do cause the artillery crew to break as well. And that was worth This cav unit might return. It might. Uh, I don't know. They're pretty low. Six, well, no, no, no. They're still very strong. 69 giggity out of 71. No, that's 10 out of 50. That's... No, they're, they're depleted. My bad. I must have been looking at a different unit. But there we go. They took out another artillery piece. And I wonder... 
Now that that's gone, they're going to start engaging this line. And sure enough, they are. That was a pretty uh, ballsy move there. That was really, really crazy. He used the infantry, used these um, these units. I assume they're not very good. I don't know. Um, but yeah, he pushed them up to absorb the gunfire. And then I, I assume like once he thought all these you know, soldiers wasted their shot on the infantry, he charged up his cap, took out the art artillery. It was dangerously close from not happening uh, because they broke. But thankfully... Uh, for their sake, they did break the artillery crew as well. And here we go. Big time engagement. Big time engagement. Poland is pushing with their line infantry and ready to fight. Looks like he's falling back some of his units. He doesn't like it. They're already breaking up there. Man, they're already breaking. Oh, look, he's falling back. That was a tough engagement for Poland. He definitely needs reinforcements. And sure enough, we do have two more units from the Legion coming up to help him. This is kind of cool. It's like Napoleon's uh, allies against the British. Uh, Italy was... I don't know about Italy. I mean, maybe... I think Italy was under... Because Napoleon was kind of known for, like, uniting Italy, correct? I, I, I got to refresh my memory on that. Anyways, uh, yeah, they're pushing hard on the flank now. So this is mostly all Italy pushing here. So no Polish support. Of course, Poland is attacking on the far flank. And we also have a big forest engagement as the main lines fight in the center. General is under attack. Hold on. General, oh, he must have got hit by a random round or something. But let's remember, they still have cab back here. I don't know if the Polish are aware of it, but it could be a problem later on. Look at this fight from the tr the bird's eye view, this tree line. This is insane. Oh, yeah. And the British are outnumbered. It's like one, one regiment of British is taking on two of the uh, Polish. I do hear a charge. I just want to make sure. Oh, oh, oh. We got a cab force going in. I think he's going to try to force them to square. Um, I'm not sure why they are walking towards the enemy. Also, we have the Legion, the Polish Legion, uh, kind of moved up there and now are falling back. Oh my god, get your cab out of there. What are you doing? What are you doing? Just sitting up there. Alright, so Italy has not engaged quite yet. Oh, there's a oh, there's a cab charge here. The British going in for charge in Poland. They're they're gonna give them oh jeez. I was gonna say they were gonna give them a taste of their own medicine, but they were already breaking before they formed square. And once they formed square, it was game over. But Poland did send in another cab unit. They break the British cab. And now Poland is moving up even closer. That might actually work out for Poland. You know, you, they got their line, their guns much closer without taking fire, because they are they are in this square formation. Uh, they're not as effective at firing, you know, against line formation. Obviously. Let's see how the force battle's going. Actually, wow, there's a lot of breaking here. We've got the uh, lights here, the skirmishers breaking, routing. Uh, we got infantry trying to hold the flank, but the center is broken. I wonder how the British are going to go about this. And I wonder how the uh, the Polish are going to gonna fight this one. Are they going to keep trying to hold this, this forest? Or are they going to fall back to this kind of hill? And maybe hold like an L shape? I don't know. We'll see. The British are being very bold here, if I do say so myself. <laughs> we got the cold stream guard. These guys are really good. I think they're going to try to push on the Polish flank, but look at this. Ready to uh, take them on. And the trees, keep in mind, guys, going through the forest, it does slow down your units. But uh, these guys are going to have a tough time against the cold stream guard. But they are pretty good. That unit of Polish soldiers. Oh, did he just friendly fire? I think he friendly fired there a little bit. That's okay. He needs to make sure he doesn't form up in front of his own cannons. And yeah, Italy is uh, supporting this push as well. So Italy has dedicated two units at the far left flank. 
to push on the British Hill. Actually, three units. Why is he firing into his own men? Oh my god, big cap charge. Look at this! Cap charge, they break some British infantry. Whoa. Break some British inf infantry. The British counter charge and break the Polish cav. Let's see if the British keep committing. Yeah, they are. They are. They're going for the artillery, which they take out. So a fantastic counter charge. Let's see if they go for this already. Oh, they might be going for the general. Men are breaking, though. He charged with his Highlanders. The Highland foot. But it's too much for them. And there's another charge. Look at this. More Highland foot, the 79th. Lots of breaking going on. Oh my god, a massive break. A massive break. And the Polish lines. The British definitely lost some units there. But overall, they are winning this battle on this flank. These units need to come back. I don't know what the caused this chain route. I don't... I, I Was it the Highland Foot single-handedly breaking the Polish? I don't know. They got to reform. Italy either... They need to reform or Italy needs to push. Which he is pushing. And that's why we have this beautiful line engagement here. Look at that. That's some juicy volleys. Let's get the British point of view. You can see how thin their lines are, but yet they fight on. Now, Poland is starting to recover a little bit, but it's, uh, it's a disaster right now. His troops are everywhere. They're breaking. That was a crazy, and that's the thing about NTW3, is that, and this is so loud, I'm sorry this is so loud, uh, but it's so crazy that all it takes is one big charge. One big charge, and you could break an entire flank of an army. By the way, did you see that? Look at the volleys. You see that? How they just, like, flash. That looks so cool. Watch them just flash and shoot each other. Oh my god, that is so awesome. That looks so good. So good. Here comes another cab charge. Unfortunately, they charge into a square formation. The Highland Foot. These mad lads. Going in for a charge. Breaking units. Forming square. They're busy. They're going to work today. Now we've got the, the 23rd Royal uh, Welsh uh, Fusiliers. Got the Yorkshire, the second Yorkshire, West, um, West Riding, Riding, excuse me. The Lightfoot, the Stormers. They have so many names. Uh, but yeah, it's looking really good for the British on this flank, and they're starting to turn towards the the side flank of the, um, you know, of the fl of the flank of the army. So the kind of the right flank. So the Polish need to. They need to regroup. They need to regroup and they need to. S they don't need to necessarily beat this force. They need to slow it down while their main force here, which is making progress. Look at this. They're breaking. They're breaking these units. So uh, they just need to hold on to the center. And Poland, with whatever he has left, needs to regroup his troops. Now, this is a problem. This is a mistake right here. This is poor army management. Uh, and this is not the first time we saw this on the Polish side. We saw Poland, the Legion, Polish Legion, kind of line up in front of his artillery. Uh, but it's alright, he fixed it over here, that's good. The British are recovering a little bit. You can see it's kind of going green to orange, green to orange. They're hanging on for dear life. Uh, this is giving me an OCD attack. Like, form up properly, dang it. You're making me anxious. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a solid defense, though. And wow, the British are breaking here. They are breaking. I did hear some artillery. Oh, there's some British cav. 
This is the British Cav that's been way in the back. They're going for a charge against Italy. All the way in the back lines, trying to get rid of the Cav. The Italians do not see it coming, and he just kind of sits there, and that's going to be... Yeah, that's going to be a huge loss for them. He needed to counter charge there uh, to try to get that charge bonus. But holy crap, this Cav is just wrecking this Italian Cav. I guess the uh, the phrase Italian Stallion uh, doesn't hold up too well, huh? Here comes a... Oh, here comes a charge, though, against the British. And they just barely form square right before they charge in that was a good effort by italy but unfortunately just a little too slow a good reaction by the british player and the firefight is still raging on the british did break but they are regrouping slightly behind the hill And there's a lot of British over here now kind of leaving the force. Like I said, pushing on the flank, the right flank of the Polish forces. Poland is on the verge of collapse here. They need to reorganize their lines. They need to regroup somewhere. They need to push somewhere. That Honestly, I think he needs to go melee mode here. If they, if they want a chance of winning this battle, maybe charge in these guys, supported by the Cav, and then just, like, go down the line, you know, that while this line holds them in place. You know what I'm saying? Like, take these two units, melee, cab charge, and rip through them. Because this is a disaster over here. This is... Oh, and... Was another artillery piece destroyed? I think so. I think so. Uh, they need to reform. Again, they don't need to beat this flank. They just need to slow them down. And they need to reorganize. This is a, uh, a mess of a, a formation. They are breaking here, though. And they are trying to take this hill. The British are kind of reforming their lines. Yeah, they're shifting. That's a good play by the British. That's buying them more time. The way they shift like that. But still, Italy needs to get aggressive. I say take these three units. Go around the flank as much as possible. Melee mode. Or, you know what? O only the two units. Take the two units. Because... These four right here will keep them busy where you can sneak up these two and then use the cab as well. You have the advantage. He we just needs to take it. Whoa, man. hold on. Where's this? Whose general was that? I don't know. Does it say? No, it just says the player name. Uh, and, oh, it was uh, Joseph. He was killed. I don't know how he died, but the general of Poland... Is, oh, well, that sure enough killed him. Man, come on, Poland. What are you doing? You're shooting your own guys. Oh, this is a disastrous flank. They have to hurry. This is a race against the clock. Come on, you got to push. You got to push. Look, he formed square. That's smart. Look at it. See how he's doing that? Look at how he has the general, like, by these rocks. Making... Thomas Graham... Uh, if he charges, it's going to be awkward. Oh, he went back into line formation. He's not going for a charge here. Again, I really wish he did. He could stretch out these two units and then use this one to flank around. Just get your bayonets in their bellies. Alright. These troops over here need to reform. Again, slow down the British... Slow down the British while you try to take him on. And look at this fish hook here. Trying to hold on. Oh, I think he's going for the general. He's going for Arthur back there. The Duke of Wellington. He also has a cav unit over here that's, uh, I, I assume, returned from routing. Can the British hold? Oh, he, ch he decided to change targets. He's going for Thomas Graham. Or, or, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's huge. That is huge. Oh my god. And look at, look who's creeping forward. Perfectly timed. You kill the general, the morale is destroyed. Italy and Italy. <laughs> I thought it was a little bit of a Polish in there, but it's all Italy. There's Poland, the Legion of Poland. They're just going in. And there's a massive 
break. Now this might be considered uh, blob rushing, which is like, uh, it's like, uh, it's not against the rules per se, but it's kind of like scummy, I guess. I guess the way it affects the morale in the game uh, kind of breaks how the game's supposed to be played. It's like not good etiquette, I guess you could say. Uh, but yeah, that's a huge break right there. And the British, this is this is getting a little awkward. Um, the the British need to hurry up now. Now that now that the race against the clock is on the British, this force here needs to unite with this force up here that is just getting hammered, hammered by the Polish and by the Italians. There we go. We form square against the Cav. All right, more troops are pushing up. They're, they're now taking the hill. So I think the British should call it quits here. Take whatever they can and regroup with their surviving ally over here. I don't know. And it's hard to tell because they're the same faction. I don't know which player is which. And maybe there's like multiple. I'm pretty sure this is one player based on how the units are moving together like this. But I think... Yeah, I guess the British are kind of making this as painful as possible for Italy and uh, the Polish Legion. to kind of take the hill, so they're just putting up a good fight. Let's see. Oh, he is going to try to get them out. They're winded, though. They're tired. This unit here, the 76th Hindustan foot, the old immortals. They're going to give their lives. They're going to become immortal. Give up their lives so the rest of their forces can regroup. Oh, epic. There we go. They're gonna. Well, they're not. I, honestly, I thought they were gonna push more up on this hill. But the British are, are coming in aggressively. Now, what's scary here is that the British still have, I would say, a little less than them. But keep in mind, these troops are better. Than what the uh, Polish are bringing. So this is an intense fight. This has gone back and forth. You know, on one flank, Italy won in the Polish. And on the other flank, the, uh, the British won. They need to quickly reform, though. Because it looks like the British are going to reclaim this hill. Italy needs to, s to form their troops here really quick. But they are tired. They are winded. Let's not forget about some British troops who return from routing, I assume. Let's kind of zoom out here. Yeah, it looks like that's it for the British, but they are going to sneak up behind. Let's see if the cab charges in. Eh, I think they can form squares, so it might not be a good idea to charge in the cab. So they're trying to kill that calf. Uh, we do have uh, the opposite here where we have some reinforcements from Poland who returned from routing. We're trying to close in and sandwich in the, uh, the British forces on the hill. Oh my god, look at this line. Look at this. This is it. This is what it comes down to right here. These forces. They're kind of offset. They're both offset here. Hmm. I'm trying to think what each player is trying to do here. Now, I'm surprised he's not pushing up something to kind of... Well, it's too late now. This unit's broken. But I was hoping he would push up to help this unit and they could sandwich in this first foot guard, which is a really good unit. Uh, but I'm curious if, if Italy and Poland pushes, then I think it's going to be like a swinging uh, effect. Where if they push forward like exactly like they are pushed forward, I believe the British would swing around, right? And kind of keep it balanced. And then they take the hill. And then they're on the flank of Italy. That's that's the problem. Uh, let me fast forward here because it looks like both forces have... There we go. No, it's the British who are pushed. Oh, wait. Italy has some hidden units. Italy has some hidden units. Wow. 
Wow. Great move by Italy. Taking on the, the 34th here. Trying to get them off the battlefield. But they need to hurry up because the British are close. And they're using this rock formation to kind of cover their movement. There you go. The British have broken. Italy's trying to reform. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Look who it is. It's the seven it's the 79th Highland Highlanders. Once again, they're very tired though. Oh, oh. 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 Oh, he misses. Look at this. This lone Italian holding back the uh, the Scottish. He's like, "No." You will not pass. Look at him, he's still going. He's, like, ah. he's still fighting. He's holding with his unit. Come on, get another kill. This is the same guy who got the he, he, he got the original kill, I believe. He's blocking, blocking the bayonet swings. Oh, he got pushed down. Dude, you're not done yet, are you? You're not done yet. Uh oh, they're coming to finish the kill. He's like, no, I will fight. I will fight once more. Amen. Oh, and they break the Highland foot. What a Chad. What a Chad. I mean, with a mustache like that, you know you're a Chad. All right, so he's going to reform with his line. He's going to regroup. And that is a huge loss for the British. And they're, uh, you know, reforming the line. I would definitely try to push on the flank here. Of the British, I, I just feel like the longer you try to go toe to toe in a gunfight against the uh, the United Kingdom, you're gonna lose just based on the strengths of the uh, the units and whatnot. But if you overwhelm them with your numbers, I think that's how you can take it. So we'll fast forward. I know this battle's getting pretty lengthy. That's the thing about NTW3, but there's no timer here. You're supposed to play with an hour timer. Uh, but yeah, they are just opening fire on this flank. They are not engaging over here. They're actually falling back. The British are reforming. They are reforming. And it looks like they are losing here. And they're falling back. Yeah, they are completely falling back, guys. Okay, so the British have decided to make their stand at the road. I thought, honestly, they were going to fall back to the hill near this building. But they have, they've, they're putting their stand right here. This is it. This is it. This is what it's all coming down to. These forces. We've got mostly Italy. Three units. Make that four units of the Polish Legion. And we'll see how this plays out. Here we go. They're going to push up. And there's the big engagement. Now Poland is moving their men to the flank. I think they're going to try to take care of these two units over here in the tree line. Let's see if they can... Oh, no. There are Italy starting to break. The British still stand strong. Look at this fight. A bloody battle indeed. The Italian center is starting to break a little bit. I like how he falls them back before they break. The general's moving up to try to keep them inspired. And you can see that actually worked. The morale went up as they got closer to the general. Wow, there's actually still a lot of Polish left over. This militia unit is just a big blob. Another unit starting to break here. Oh my god, the British are doing it. They're holding. Look at the horse. Oh, it got shot. Oh, how sad. Coldstream Guard. These are really good units. Look at Coldstream Guard. We have the first foot guard, the fi uh, 52nd, and the first foot guard. So these are really solid units. Even though they're outnumbered, they're definitely not outmatched. All right, he's moving back up reinforcements to help out. Oh, this unit's on the verge of breaking. 
Oh, man. Italy's taking a lot of losses here. Ooh, the British firing from the tree line. The Polish are regrouping. I think he wants them to come out of the tree line. He doesn't like that. Oh my god, the British. They are causing mass morale drop in the Italian army. What an epic stand here. Look at they've lost some brothers. But yet they fight on. Oh, now they're falling back. Oh my god, it's back and forth. And now the British are going to pursue. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Just back and forth, back and forth. What in the world? Are they having a truce? The generals are meeting in the middle to negotiate. That is hilarious. I have never seen this before in a battle. We have the Duke of Wellington maneuvering, I guess. What are they doing? Why are they... They're going up to speak to each other that or they're going to fight each other to the death oh oh no negotiations went poorly and the generals are charging in oh my god what the heck and arthur is dead the duke of wellington is dead uh but the generals all killed the they just killed themselves. That's... Oh, my God. I honestly thought the uh, generals were going to meet mid-battle and negotiate something. And maybe you would see, like, one army just back away. And that was the end of the battle. Like, that would be pretty cool. Uh, but now they're both generalless. <laughs> the generals fought. I, I, I'm still kind of speechless of what the heck's going on. Maybe you'll see both armies just disengage. You're like, you know what? Why are we fighting this war anyways? <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. Here we go. So no, they're not walking away. Uh, Poland is pushing hard on the flank. And I think the British might lose this now. Uh, Italy needs to get their troops up there as well. Just put pressure on the British. Oh, man. What are the British doing? They're awkwardly reforming their line. I think he's trying to avoid a fight against the... Mm. I don't know. He's just oddly shifting his troops around. I don't... I don't think... Now that their general is dead, I don't see them winning this. Uh, it was... Kind of a cool engagement. Again, I thought they were like meeting in the middle to negotiate. There we go. Oh my god, the British are actually breaking the Polish. Oh my god. They might win this. Could you imagine negotiations just going poorly where the generals, instead of just like, you know, being like, all right, good sir, well, I'll meet you on the battlefield. And like, okay. Instead, they just start hacking away at each other. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, big break there. I think the British are still going to win this. Wow. I mean, it's especially, I mean, keep in mind, the Italians also lost their general and the Prussians lost their general as well. So, um, yeah, no surprise that they're breaking. I think that's going to be it, guys. I think that's the battle. What an ending. 
What an ending. And there we go. They're going to push up. They're going to engage. And there's just nothing they can do. They are trying to fall back. But it's like, come on. At this point, just fight it out. And that right there is a victory for the British. There you have it. So, um... I guess they had to have a CPU on there, but it was like a patrons faction. I don't know. They did, obviously, they, did, they didn't get any, any kills. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, look at the kills on here with the British. This was sent in by uh, Lun Lunarad. Lunarad. I never get your name right, man. Uh, we He actually goes way back. I've known him for a long time. I do appreciate the replay, man. Uh, this was really cool. He got the most kills. It was a uh, very close battle. I love the general charge at the end. That was funny. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for me, guys. Here's the kills of uh, the British Army. I hope you guys enjoyed this battle as much as I did. It was an intense one with a lot of cool hill and tree battles. Uh, if you guys did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like and share and all that jazz. I do appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you next time on the battlefield.